Innocent until proven guilty, right? Well, that's uh, not necessarily the case in Delphi, Indiana. The way that they seem to want to treat a very specific prisoner, his name is Richard Allen, seems to go against the grain of that way of thinking. If, if you're charged with a crime, yet the trial has not taken place, you typically are, are in a jail cell. Well, they're saying, well, it's, that's, that's, that's a bridge too far for us. It's too dangerous. Let's put him in a maximum security prison. Better yet, let's move him around maximum security prisons and then abuse the shit out of him. Uh, well, maybe they're not saying that directly, but that seems to be what's happening. So you got to take into the equation here, whether he's guilty or not, you cannot treat a person this way, especially if they have not had their day in court yet. We're going to go through this affidavit here. This is the motion to transfer that was filed by uh, Richard Allen's uh, attorneys, and it details quite a bit about what they've witnessed behind the scenes in the jail, their interactions with Richard. And we even have a second one in the affidavit that was attached to this when it was filed the other day that Judge Gull didn't want to put on the docket for some reason and then eventually attached it to this when this was filed, you know, because transparency hasn't exactly been a thing in this case. So here we go. This is the document, the motion to transfer. Let's learn about what's going on inside the prison system that Richard Allen is facing uh, right now. There's some legalese in here, but it is what it is. Now comes the defendant by and through his appointed counsel, Robert C. Uh, Shremen and William Labredo, and hereby submits this motion to transfer and state as follows. Argument, Richard Allen is currently being held in a pretrial detention at the Wabash Valley Correctional Facility, a maximum security state prison. After visiting with Mr. Allen at both the Westville Correctional Facility and the Wabash Valley Correctional Facility, it is counsel's belief that one, Mr. Allen is not being treated similar to the other pretrial detainees being held in county jails. Because he's not in the county jail. And pretrial incarceration at Wabash Valley Correctional Facility will seriously, if not fatally, impact counsel's ability to effectively represent Mr. Allen due to the distance of travel and visitation conditions. Facts, number one, on November 3rd, 2022, the state of Indiana filed a motion on behalf of the sheriff of Carroll County asking the court to transfer Richard Allen to the custody of the Department of Corrections, claiming that due to this being a high-profile case, the Carroll County Sheriff could not adequately provide Mr. Allen with necessary security or other needs at the Carroll County Jail. Judge Diener, without holding an evidentiary hearing. That's right. We didn't want to talk about that at all. Just get him out of here. On the merits, no argument saying, why can't you do this? Granted the state's motion and approved Richard Allen's transfer to the Department of Corrections, then recused himself from the case the same day. Not weird at all. Mr. Allen had no opportunity to object to this transfer, and no one appeared to consider how this might negatively impact Mr. Allen's defense. On April 5th, 2023, Mr. Allen's former counsel filed an emergency motion to modify safekeeping order, essentially a motion to transfer Mr. Allen to a county jail. I've reviewed counsel's motion, and although I lack personal knowledge to vouch for all of the allegations made as Mr. Allen's present counsel, I believe it to be a meritorious motion. And based upon 25 years of practicing law, I agree that Mr. Allen is not being treated similar to other pretrial detainees in county jails and that his pretrial incarceration at a distant state prison severely impacts counsel's ability to effectively communicate with Mr. Allen and effectively represent him. I would uh, incorporate the legal arguments made by prior counsel and, and that Mr. Allen's distance from present counsel and the conditions during visitation negatively impact counsel's ability to effectively represent Mr. Allen. Number three, on April 14th, 2023, this court denied the counsel's, the prior counsel's motion and Mr. Allen remains in the custody of the Department of Corrections. On April 28th, 2023, this court received a letter written by an inmate at Westville Correctional Facility alleging that Mr. Allen was being abused and mistreated. On September 18th, 2023, prior counsel filed a motion for a Franks hearing in support of their previously filed motion to suppress prior counsels included in the 136-page memorandum with 126 confidential exhibits. The memorandum and exhibits, among other things, alleged prison guards at Westville Correctional Facility were allowed to wear patches 
on their official uniform supporting Odinism and that crime scene photos suggested a potential connection to Odinism, a Nordic religion and or cult that has been associated both in the prison system and in society in general with white supremacy. After reviewing crime scene photos and visiting Mr. Allen at Westville Correctional Facility, present counsel believes these claims have merit and that pretrial incarceration within the state prison system negatively impacts Mr. Allen's rights in addition to counsel ability to effectively represent him. On October 27th of 2023, this court appointed attorneys Robert C. Sherman and William Labredo to represent Richard Allen, attorney Scremen, and Labredo both reside and maintain primary offices in Fort Wayne, Allen County, Indiana. Fort Wayne is approximately 106 miles from Westville Correctional Facility and a two-hour drive. Fort Wayne is approximately 233 miles from Wabash Correctional Facility and approximately a three-and-a-half-hour drive without stops. Council's most recent visit to Mr. Allen at Wabash Correctional Facility was a 10-hour delay. On November 19, 2023, Council visited with Mr. Allen at Westville Correctional Facility. The visit was an uh, adorious process, which included lengthy travel, complicated and protracted prison security procedures, and difficult visiting conditions. Throughout our legal consultation, Mr. Allen remained uncomfortably and unnecessarily shackled and chained in a manner resembling Hannibal Lecter. Remember, this is a guy who just worked at CVS. No criminal history. Hannibal Lecter were treating him like. While guards watched through glass panels and the door was ajar. Mr. Allen clearly appeared intimidated by the guards and was hesitant to speak freely with counsel. You can't do that. That's not how this works. It's attorney-client privilege. They're supposed to have some privacy. Clearly, they're not getting it there, but because our prison system is so messed up, we're like, Neh! Although none of the prison guards were wearing patches in support of Odinism, one of the guards did have a symbolic face tattoo of Odin spear and multiple hand and finger tattoos, emblematic of Odinism and or Norse mythology. The same prison guard had a public Facebook account that also displayed the same tattoos in addition to a necklace with Thor's hammer inscribed with the letters B-R-S-R-C-R, -R -R, an acronym for uh, Berserker, which is a very specific type of Norse battle axe and the name given to warriors fighting in honor of Odin. Uh, other photos displayed three interlocking triangles and other symbol associated with Odinism. So everybody's like, Odinism is crazy. I'm sorry, it's in here. I don't know if the, you know, involved in the murder, but it certainly uh, is playing a, a part, the fact that these guards that have been accused of abuse have it tattooed on their bodies, including their face. They might be kind of into it a little bit if you're going that far with a tattoo. I don't know, call me crazy. Mr. Allen stated that Westfield guards were intimidating and reluctant to provide him with shower and recreational access because it caused them extra work. As a result, he often simply remained in his cell and went without recreational time or a shower to keep the peace. On 12-22-23, counsel visited Mr. Allen at Wabash Correctional Facility, where Mr. Allen had recently been moved without consulting counsel. The round-trip drive visit took over 10 hours to complete. Access to the prison once again took nearly an hour and several gates had to be manually cranked open as there was a power outage in a portion of the prison and doors could not be opened. Prison staff indicated they did not have any type of visitation rooms for counsel to use because why would you have that in a prison? They were not equipped for such matters, quote unquote. You're a prison. You have inmates there who likely have some sort of legal representation who may need to meet with counsel. So this idea, we aren't equipped for that? It's like saying McDonald's doesn't have a kitchen. We're not equipped for burgers here. You're McDonald's. Yeah, I know. That's kind of how it works. Seems in Indiana. Not a place I think anybody wants to get locked up because it really is starting to sound a lot more like a third world country or Mexico or something. But it fashioned a visitation room in some of them sort of a prep kitchen. How nice of them. They got the chef's table. Within the prison housing unit, council was informed the visitation would be monitored by video camera. 
Counsel was taken to Mr. Allen, who was locked in a prison cell located within the kitchen. The cell appeared to be uh, designated as a place to feed a prisoner. The cell had a solid iron door with a small hinged iron flap, approximately eight inches high, that opened just far enough to slide a food tray through. The iron flap was left open on it, and through the small opening that we were allowed to see Mr. Allen and speak with him through the food flap. Because that's, again, how that's supposed to work. This shit is going on in our prison system. And if you're going to sit there and, and think, well, they're all prisoners, they deserve it. Now, this is an example. This man is innocent until proven guilty. This is how he's being treated. Now, if he's found guilty, whatever. That, but still, you can't treat people like this. You can't treat uh, an inmate that is, should be in a county jail like this. You shouldn't even be treating people who have been found guilty quite like this, to be completely honest. This is just utterly insane. So they were allowed to speak through the, uh, the opening. That's where we'll pick up. A folding table was set up approximately six feet from the cell door with three chairs on the far side of the table. We were instructed to sit in the chairs and not to approach Mr. Allen or come within six feet of his cell door. This arrangement made it impossible to show Mr. Allen any videos or documents or discuss the case with him without raising our voices and almost shouting. In, a 20, in 25 years of practicing law in five states, including representing numerous defendants charged with murder, I have never had to contact an in-custody legal consultation in this fashion. Never had to conduct, rather. The prison's visitation arrangement created an environment wherein effectively representing Mr. Allen was a fiction. Mr. Allen stated that in the two weeks he had been at the Wabash Valley Correctional Facility, he had not received or even been offered any recreational time, and he believed he had taken one, possibly two showers, and had not been allowed outside the prison yard, although other inmates enjoyed courtroom recreation. Well, we, and then we're going to get to the conclusion here in a second, but I, I think we know pretty much Richard Allen has a get-a-new-trial-free card at this point should he be found guilty judging by this and many other factors. And at the same point, that's if he survives. Have you seen this man slowly deteriorate over the last couple of years when he's been behind bars? It's horrible. I mean, it's scary to watch. This is a man, no criminal history, father, husband, worked at the CVS, and this is how they're treating him. Still no trial, no speedy trial either because the judge kicked the attorneys out even though they wanted to go forward. But for some reason, we can't quite go forward on this one. Hmm. I wonder why that is. Is it Odinism or is it really, really corrupt police work, corrupt legal system in Delphi, Indiana, that does not want exposure? and They're going to do everything to make sure Richard Allen does not have his day in court, not to, not to represent himself, not to fight murder charges, but to not expose the corruption in Delphi. That seems to be the goal here, and it seems to be an interweb of people who are all willing to be part of that. Nobody wants to call it out on their shit. In conclusion here on this, in 25 years of practicing law, I have never had to conduct an in-custody legal visit in the manner I have with Mr. Allen. I routinely conduct legal visits within the jail's in Allen, Adams, Huntington, Rudolph, and Wells counties, including consultations with numerous clients charged with murder. There is never a guard present during the consultation, and there is never audio or video equipment recording the visit. My clients are never shackled, handcuffed, or chained during the visits. These are clearly state prison policies, not county jail policies. I'm often able to simply sit at a table with my client and have a conversation. But at the very least, I'm able to sit directly across from my client and speak through a large plexiglass partition where we can view videos and documents. County jails routinely, dare I say daily, have lawyers visiting pretrial detainees. And as such, county jails have rooms specifically Designed for attorney visits, county jails also have a streamlined access protocol for defense attorneys that often takes no more than a minute or so, as opposed to an hour and laptops, phones, and tablets routinely allowed during attorney visits with no special requests. County jail visits with clients can even be set up the same day. Clients in county jails are extremely accessible 
and multiple visits can be quickly and efficiently made when legal issues arise. Point being, he's supposed to be in a county jail. If you're not going to put him there, then you at least have to give him the same liberties that someone would have there because that's where he should be. Based upon counsel's observations and experience, Mr. Allen is not being treated similar to other pretrial detainees being held in county jails. However, even if this court were to find that Mr. Allen's pretrial treatment within the state prison system does not in itself justify moving him to a county jail, evidence is absolutely overwhelming that pretrial detainment at Wabash Valley Correctional Facility will seriously, if not fatally, impact counsel's ability to effectively represent Mr. Allen due to the sheer distance of travel and the unworkable visitation conditions. Counsel for Mr. Allen respectively, re respectfully requests that he be transferred to either Allen County Jail or Adams County Jail. Respectfully signed by Robert, the attorney for Mr. Allen. That's what's going on behind bars in the Delphi case. That's where Richard Allen is at right now. Is this right? Is this fair? Again, you got to take it out of, take all the consideration of guilt or innocence out of this. It's just procedurally, you can't essentially torture someone when they're innocent until proven guilty. You can't torture people when they've been found guilty. What does Richard Allen know? What could Richard Allen say or do? that the folks in Delphi are so concerned with it, they're going to this length, a length that inevitably will not work for them. This, this will eventually have repercussions. But are those repercussions better than whatever Richard Allen may be ready to expose? Hey, it's Tony Bruschi. If you like the podcast, be sure to like, subscribe, and press that bell so you don't miss any of our updates on the cases we're following for you right here at the Hidden Killers podcast and True Crime Today. And thanks.